Where in the world did Santa Claus come from? Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and uh, well, hey, Merry Christmas. I don't care what time of year it is you're watching this video, Merry Christmas. I love Christmas. Christmas is my very favorite holiday. And as a Christian, I know that we celebrate Christmas because we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating when Jesus came down to earth as a little baby, and he came to save us from our sins. And that's awesome. That's an awesome thing to celebrate. It's my very favorite holiday. And so the other day, I was, I was looking through my Bible. I was looking up stuff about Christmas, and, and there's all kinds of Christmas stuff in the Gospels. So that's the first four books of the, of the New Testament, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's all kinds of Christmas stuff in there. But I noticed that there was somebody missing from these stories from the Bible, these, these true stories from the Bible, and there is not a single thing in there about Santa Claus. But Santa is, a, he's a pretty big deal around Christmas time. You know, we see him, he's at the mall, and we see him on TV, and there's all kinds of people who say that, you know, he comes down the chimney to bring you presents, and there are some people who say that he's not even real. And so it got all confused in my head. So I was looking, I was looking up in the Bible trying to find Santa Claus. He's not in there at all. And so today we're going to talk about some stuff, some stuff that I did, some research that I did, not in the Bible, but but on the internet, my grandma helped me find all this cool stuff on the internet about Santa Claus. And I tell you what, there is a really interesting history about this guy. So let's let's jump right into that. So first of all, Santa Claus is a little bit hard to research because Santa Claus has a ton of different names. Okay, so like different people from different parts of the world, they call him different things. So some people call him Santa Claus. Some people call him Sinter Claus. Some people call him Saint Nicholas. Some people call him Kris Kringle. Some people call him Pierre Noel. Like he's got all kinds of these different names. And, and I was trying to find out which, you know, which one is actually Santa Claus. And the thing is, is if you go back, 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 the farthest you can go back, you'll find a man named Saint Nicholas. So Santa's real, real name is Saint Nicholas. And Saint Nicholas, he, he was born in about 270 AD. So that's about 270 years after Jesus was born. So he's not in the Bible because, because like all the Bible was written before Saint Nicholas was even born. So when Saint Nicholas was a little kid, he just went by Nicholas. And well, actually, it was like Nicolaus or something like that. I, it, was, it was a little bit different, but in, in English, we would call it Nicholas, the name Nicholas. That's why we call him Saint Nick. And Nicholas was born to a very wealthy family in the area kind of what is now Turkey. And that's where he lived, and that's where he became, he became a bishop later. We'll talk about that in a second. But he lived, he lived his life, and, and he loved Jesus very much. Nicholas loved Jesus a whole lot. In fact, he wanted to give his whole life to Jesus. So he spent most of his life serving God. And even as a kid, he loved the Lord a whole lot. And, and as he grew up, he became, he became more and more important in the church. And he eventually became a bishop, which in some, in some Christian denominations, they still have a bishop. But if you don't know what a bishop is, basically a bishop is like, he's like a pastor, but he's a pastor for like way, way more people. He's a pastor for like lots of different churches. He's kind of in charge of a whole bunch of different churches. He makes sure that they're following what God wants them to do. So he was in charge of a lot of churches in, in, again, kind of the area that's now Turkey. And there are a whole lot of stories about things St. Nicholas did that, that, were, that furthered the kingdom of God. And there are lots and lots of people that look up to him as someone that they want to be like. You know, St. Nicholas was especially, he was especially well known for being very generous. Yeah, you know, so when he was a kid, his parents were very rich, but they, they died when he was pretty young. And he ended up living with his uncle, whose name was also Nicholas. But St. Nicholas used all the money that he had to help people in need. And one of the most famous stories about St. Nicholas, and, and this gets told a couple of different ways, so we're not exactly sure which one of these ways is exactly true, but, but we know that something very much like this happened. So here's, here's one, of the, one of the ways that people tell this story, is, is there was this, this man, and he had three daughters, and they were starting to get a little bit old. And uh, in, in back in those days, a long time ago, long, long, long time ago, like more than a thousand years ago, if you were a, a girl and you wanted to get married, then your parents had to send some money with you, and they called that a dowry, okay? And you had to have a dowry to get married, and if you didn't get married, then there was not a good life in store for you. You really had to get married in order to have a good life as a girl. 
But this guy who had three daughters, he had no money for a dowry for these daughters. And so they were going to have to grow up and not have a good life. They weren't going to be able to get married. And so St. Nicholas, what he did, because see, he knew that this man who did not have any money for his daughters, he knew that he was a very proud man and that he would not have wanted somebody to give him money for this. He, he would have felt bad if somebody had to give him money, even though he really needed it. So St. Nicholas, he took some money and he was really sneaky about it, okay? So in the it, it, late at night, okay, he would go and he would, there would be an open window in this family's house and he'd sneak up to the window and he'd throw in some money in like little bags, okay? So little bags of money he'd throw in. And according to the way some people tell this story, the girls, the three girls, they had their socks hanging up on the fireplace, their stockings hanging up on the fireplace and they were hanging there so that they'd dry off. They'd, they'd, they'd be all dry in the morning after being washed. And when he threw the money in there, when he threw the money in, in the window, they landed in the socks. They landed in the stockings. And so that's probably the most famous story about St. Nicholas, but there are a ton of stories about St. Nicholas, a ton of stories about some really awesome things that he did, you know, things where he would give money to, to the poor, especially kids, and he would he'd do some really miraculous things. There's even some stories about St. Nicholas raising people from the dead who had been killed. Yeah, which is awesome. And, you know, he did all this in Jesus' name. He wasn't being like, I'm all magical St. Nicholas. I'm going to do all these things. He, he prayed to God that things would happen and things would happen. Like the Bible says, the Bible says that if you have if you have faith that is a teeny, teeny, tiny little bit of faith the size of a mustard seed, then you could tell a mountain to go from one place and throw it into the sea. And, you know, he didn't do that sort of thing, but he did some really miraculous things. You know, like it says he raised some people from the dead and, and by praying to God. And also St. Nicholas, it says that, that there was a famine in the place where he was living, so there was no food. And there were some people who came by on a ship, and they had some food on their ship. And St. Nicholas, he said, hey, um, can we have some of that food? And the guy said, oh, well, no, you can't have some of the food because we have to bring exactly this much food back, otherwise we're going to get in a whole lot of trouble. And St. Nicholas said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll take some food, and then when you go, you won't get in any trouble. And they said, oh, okay, well, we'll do that. And so then they took the food, and then when they went to go drop the food off, where they were supposed to drop it off in the end, there was none missing, even though they took a whole bunch. So it was sort of like the loaves and the fish thing that Jesus did. St. Nicholas was able to do by praying to God. And those are some of the stories that, that are told about him. And I tend, to, I tend to believe them. You know, there are lots of stories in the Bible, especially of people doing miraculous things. And there are stories of, of people in modern times, too, who also, you know, they, they've seen God do a miracle. And so I, I believe that these miracles happened through St. Nicholas. But all of them, I know for sure, came from God, came from St. Nicholas' faith in Jesus Christ. And there are some churches that believe that in order to be a saint, you have to have done a whole bunch of miracles in your life. And, and there are other churches that believe that everybody who believes in Jesus is a saint. That's kind of where I end up. I, I, I think that if we believe in Jesus Christ, then we're part of the saints that they talk about in the Bible. But either way, there was this day in December. Okay, so December 25th is Christmas. That's the day that most of us celebrate Christmas. That's the day that most of us give presents. But in some parts of the world, they celebrate St. Nicholas on his own day, and that's on December 6th, I think it is, and, and they, they give gifts just like St. Nicholas gave gifts to people, but a whole lot of people, they decided instead of celebrating St. Nicholas and then also Jesus on the 25th, they would just celebrate both on the 25th. And these days, especially in America, I think most of us just think about Santa Claus on Christmas, and we give gifts to each other on Christmas, and we don't celebrate a day especially for St. Nicholas. And there are lots of things that I couldn't find a whole lot of historical evidence for, things that we believe about Santa Claus that I don't, I don't know if they're true. And, and you're going to have to talk to your parents about it because I think they probably have a good idea of what's real and what's not real. So I can't vouch for, you know, St. Nicholas having a whole bunch of elves that make toys for him. And I can't vouch for him, you know, flying around with the reindeer on Christmas Eve and giving gifts to boys and girls. But I can tell you that St. Nicholas, he was a real person and he loved Jesus very very much and whether you call him Santa Claus or Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas or Kris Kringle or whatever you call him we should follow in Saint Nicholas footsteps and we should we should be generous to those in need and we should give gifts to people and we should we should give holy of ourselves and and really celebrate the love of Jesus Christ. And so I'm not here to tell you today whether you should or should not believe in Santa Claus. You know, that's something you should probably talk to your parents about. You know, they've been around a long time. They've got good answers about that kind of stuff. 
But what I do want to tell you is that whether you believe in Santa Claus or whether you don't believe in Santa Claus, let's all follow St. Nicholas' example and lead lives of generosity. Merry Christmas, guys. And don't forget that Jesus is the reason for the season. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Hey, yeah, this one is a little different than I usually do. You know, usually I'm talking about things that happen in my life and how they apply to things that I'm learning in the Bible. And, uh, but this, was, this one was a little bit different. And so if you liked this story, go ahead and say something in the comments. I really like to hear from you guys. And, and if you'd really prefer me to just stick to stuff from the Bible, yeah, I totally understand that. that that'd be fine too. You go ahead and, and put that in the comments down there because I want to I wanna hear from you guys. And I, I really, really believe that God's Word is true. The Bible is truth. And there's no truth that is more true than what we find in the Bible. And so, yeah, reading from the Bible is super, super important. And I really want to make sure that you guys know that this Christmas season, that, you know, Santa Claus is cool and the tree and the gifts and all that stuff, it, it, it's neat and it's fun. And I really love Christmas and the lights and all that stuff. But I want you to know that the most important thing is that we are celebrating the love of God made real in sending his son Jesus for us to live with us and then eventually to die for us that is what makes Christmas so special and I really hope that no matter what time of year it is that you will celebrate the love of God through sending his son Jesus Christ